Here we'll make a plot of the temperature contours. This is a nice colorful plot that helps us see what's happening in the flow as we are adding heating at the wall. And it's, it's uh, very useful to build physical intuition. That's one of the nice things about simulation. It helps us see what's happening in the, in the problem. Um, and that can really contribute to getting a physical feel for um, the problem. I'll go to CFD post and I will select this icon here uh, for contours. I can give it a suitable name. I'll call it temperature contours and spell it correctly or at least try to. And make sure you're editing temperature contours. And the location is periodic one. And the variable is temperature that we want to plot. Uh, let me be greedy and ask for 51 contours. It gives a nice, it's a, a smoother looking plot. And I will say apply. Let me turn off the velocity vectors. And if I zoom out here, Okay, um, so you see, this is the, you know, this is the unheated part, and that's 300, and that's a check on the boundary conditions, right? That's 300 here, and it's 300 here. And then if I translate along, I see the effect of the heating. Um, and this is, you know, it can be a challenge to visualize these long, skinny pipes. So let's stretch out the pipe in the, in the radial direction uh, we lose the aspect ratio. Um, that's something to keep in mind. So I'll go to the View tab here and select Apply Scale. And I will scale up the radial direction by a factor of 30. And I'll say Apply. And, and you see the wireframe is not, not scaled. Um, so I can turn off the wireframe so that gets rid of that. Um, and let me zoom out here. Okay, so that gives you a nice visual feel for what's happening even though the aspect ratio is not preserved. Um, and you can see that the, the thermal boundary layer is, is developing here, like something like that. Uh, similarly over here because we reflected um, our domain about the axis, you know, we're getting the lower wall too. And, and you see the, the thermal boundary layers merge and here we expect the flow to become uh, thermally fully developed and, and we'll see that uh, in, in just a little, little bit. And it's also important to look at the, you know, the, the legend and make sure that these range of temperatures make sense. It's not outrageous, okay? So uh, the, the temperatures are not outrageous, so maybe that's plausible. And then if I look at the temperature range here, around, uh, say, closer to the exit, over here, it's about, it's green, so it's somewhere, you know, let's say, like, around 370. And then over here, it's red, so it's that. So the mixed mean temperature, I expect to be between about 370 and, and 4 you know, 430, 4, 440. Um, and so I can calculate the mixed mean temperature as a hand calc and, and uh, make sure that, you know, it, it lies within that range. That would be a, a check that uh, one could do to make sure that those temperatures made sense. Um, the mixed mean temperature is, is kind of an average, but it's a weighted average. It's weighted by the velocity. So you will find that it's not exactly in between those two values. Uh, it'll be closer to to the green because the velocity is weighted and the velocity is higher towards the green. Um, okay, so we can you know save this image um, using this icon here. So I'll say save picture, and I might have to go up a few levels. So it goes into you know the um, the one of the folders that. Uh, answers create, so I can go up a couple of levels um, and save my image there. I can call it, I'll call it temp underscore contours and say save uh, and again save. 
and you can play around with these options. The other way to save it is, you know, using the snipping tool in Windows, which some of you might be familiar with. So you say snip and do the snipping tool, and then you can take a snapshot of the, of the screen. And let's also save the project. So I'll say file, save project. Um, see, because I have Fluent here, Fluent has a license, so I'll say request license. Um, so the license has come from Fluent to, to CFD post. Um, and I can go back to the project and also, you know, overwrite the WBPZ file, which I, you know, which we created um, a while back. So I can say file, archive, and if I go to my working folder, let me browse to that. Okay, um, I will overwrite that WBPZ. And I'll save the results and imported files that I don't think I have imported files. So one thing to keep in mind is that the WBPZ doesn't get overwritten um, unless you, you know, you explicitly um, s select file archive. Uh, when you say save, only this gets updated. So you have to say file archive for this to be updated. That's something to keep in mind. 